Majestic Records. You are now tuned in to the unspeakable truth. We are so excited to be stepping back into the political arena with our special guest, Bria Grant, Lance Dorsey Sr., and Michael Mayo Sr. On the show this week, we will be highlighting the recent heartbeat bills that are sweeping the nation. Could Wisconsin be next? Recently, the county executive of Milwaukee signed a bill stating that racism is a public health concern and has challenged other cities and states to follow suit. Do you think it's a political move for our county executive, or is this a bill that would truly benefit the people suffering from racism? In Milwaukee, we have so many black leaders, but can we hold them accountable? And are they there to support the people in their district that look like them? You are now tuned in to The Unspeakable Truth, where we speak nothing but the truth, but we speak it in love. Welcome to The Unspeakable Truth. I'm your host, Quake Kawachafi, and I'm excited about today's um, edition because we're going back into the political lane. I'm here with Lance Dorsey Sr., Michael Mayo Sr., and Bria Grant. And I'm telling you, it is so powerful to have this cast up on here because we, we try to talk on things that most people are afraid to talk about. When, we're, when we talk about certain issues, people say, oh, I don't want to talk about this. I won't go on your show. But all three of you were eager to be able to talk about the things that's real. And I think it's only when we have real conversation that we can have real change. Mm-hmm. And so one of the biggest things that's going on um, in our country right now that affects us from a national and a local level is this attack on abortion. And so just want to know, what's your, what's your thoughts on abortion off the bat, Mike? Well, I think abortion, I, I, I really want women to have the right to choose. I'm not in fear of doing one take for life. Yeah. But if you have incest, rape, the woman's health, she should make that choice. Because men don't have to have that choice. So also, men don't have to worry about it. If they have so many babies, nobody said they want to castrate them. So let's be real about that. So why is uh, people are trying to tell women what to do with their body? I have a problem with that. So, well, Bri, I'm going to go with you with that. Talk about that. You're the one long woman on the set. I know, right? So um, while I, I agree with... Um, Super- <laughs> right. So, I, 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 so I you're always You know, that's that, that, uh-huh. just that elvership, right? You want to give respect where respect is due. So um, I agree with Michael. I will add on to that, though, as a woman, you know, the question for me in this way, as it appears, right, we have all these co- these states right now that have anti-abortion bills and this movement seems to have picked up a lot of steam. Why, right? Where is it coming from? Who's behind it? What's the motive? Yeah. You know, and then when you look at the statistics, and what's happening, in some ways you can kind of draw a picture of what the issue is, right? And so I looked at some of the statistics um, for abortion and who's having abortions. For one, sometimes people assume that the face um, Mm -hmm. is you know the poor white, the poor black girl, yeah. and uh, when you, when you talk about the Hyde Amendment, where people are are saying, "Hey, we don't want to get federal funding yeah. to support this," they're really associ- associating abortion with, "Oh, we have to pay for poor people mm-hmm. to have this procedure done." Um, but you know, it it doesn't look like what people think it looks like. What does it look like? Uh, well, it varies in states, right? In in Alabama, where they just um, voted on the most restrictive um, uh, law against abortion, um, you know, while uh, it is a high number of African American women that are having abortions, um, I think in some ways the underlying fear is that you know Europeans will be minorities. And, you know, uh, we need to make sure that our w- European women don't participate in these procedures. So, so or it me, will. I don't want to get our yeah. conspiracy theory on us. But then we will minimize our own population and will be dominated by by uh, those who we didn't build this country for. And so, so, I see last you, you <laughs> chopping the gun. Oh, yeah, on that point that you're making, uh, it's real. Because if you look at Europe right now and the low birth rate that they're having in Europe, you know, on our alabaster cousins, um, it's low. You have a lot of immigrants coming in, and they are having babies like mad. Yeah. You know, so that is real, and it's real here because everybody knows what's going to happen in 2040, 2050. You know, they will be the minority. Mm-hmm. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't care how many babies they have; that's going to happen, mm-hmm. and that fear is real. Okay, but okay. so so let's bring it back to the abortion, though. So they're doing all these things in Alabama, in the South, all of these different states. Mm-hmm. But we have a Roe v. Wade. That's federal. That's going to trump that. 
So what do you really think the real incentive is for these states starting to do this right now? Well, I think it has to do with that. But right now is they have the Supreme Court in play. Okay. okay, so they're able to do that. Now, please let me add, because I was coming off your point, I'm a man, and I'm overtly challenged <laughs> down to, the, to, to dealing with an abortion. You know, you know, if you if people are looking at the picture as a whole, I'm sure you've got 25 men in Alabama that said, yeah. okay, women shouldn't have abortion. Not one But it was woman. a woman governor who well, actually she signed, signed it off because she's a politician. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Absolutely. she's a politician. <laughs> her, her vote would have been overwritten with a veto. Yeah. Period. Okay? But understand what abortion, the politics of abortion really is. It's not about abortion. It's about politics. They can get their, their grassroots all kicked up around. A baby, an, an unborn child can't speak up. An unborn child cannot be mad at you. An unborn child doesn't vote. So we can use that as a political axe to cut people off and, and use your, your evangelical vote and yeah. everything else. Mm -hmm. To get it going. And, and it's all politics. They don't give a rat's butt about these babies. They don't care. I want to highlight, too, and kind of go back to um, some of the point about who's having their abortions. Here in Wisconsin, there are 60% white women having abortions here in Wisconsin. So you don't hear us really have that, you know, same hurrah yeah. in some ways um, because it's just kind of the rust belt. We know how yeah. our country is, is set up. There are morals and values and issues that are more prevalent in certain parts of our country than North. Um, but, you know, the face of even the African-American women are not poor women, yeah. right? They are women who are, um, in some cases, have had a child and they are, they are making what they feel is the best decision for their families um, or their career, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and doing it in what they feel is a responsible way. So th this is what I want to say. Mike, I want to give you the last word on this topic. So many times people talk about abortion, then they talk about the death penalty, the contradiction with inside of that. What is your thought is what's going to happen with abortion laws? Well, since they're talking have, constitutional federal. Because since they stacked the Supreme Court, they are, they're going to try to bring, roll back Roe versus Wade. And, and, but they're going to still have some abortion ideals there. Because it's going to be kind of interesting because you got two more conservative people who may get on the board, mm -hmm. on the Supreme Court. How will they look? How will they make up? How are they going to construct not only abortion, a uh, uh, little from an action, education. So this that's why they're going to make sure that they still can be accepted. So it's like you said, it's bigger than just well, abortion. Well, it's well, an well, underlying. Well, yeah. I told you it was going to be hot. Mm -hmm. We coming back to you. We want to take it. We we got to take a short break here at the Unspeakable Truth, where we speak nothing but the truth, but we speak it in love. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Katrina Moore of Moore Moore County. We are a full service accounting establishment specializing in tax preparation. Year after year, people work hard to earn more and more money. With all of the new tax code changes for 2018, don't stress, let us do the rest. Our service is professional and affordable. Our people are courteous and knowledgeable. For an appointment, call today, 414-213-8199. Moore and Moore County, where you're more than just a number. Hey, have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Hey, have you heard? Hey, have you heard? I don't know what I'm supposed to hear. What's up, little Vic? Have you heard? I'm hosting the Running Rebels Epic Galilada, September 26th. Welcome back to The Unspeakable Truth. I'm your host, Quaco Atrophy, joined by Bria, Mike, and Lance. And told you the conversation was going to be hot. Now, Lance, you talked about abortion, and you said it had nothing to do with the babies. You said this is all political. And, and as we kind of bring it back to a local standpoint, uh, our county executive, Chris Avery, just signed that racism is a public health concern documented in Milwaukee and challenged other cities within the state and other states to do the same thing. What, what's your thought and take on racism as a public health concern and, and the county's executive uh, signing that bill into action? Well, I fully understand him doing that, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the black race. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a political move, true. But if you look at the numbers, you know, in most counties, it's the 
alabaster, you know, alabaster cousins who are most affected mm -hmm. by racism. You see, the stress level is on them. A lot of people aren't recognizing that. I think there was in Alabama, one county, they said 38% of the mortality rates was higher in this one really, really racist county among alabaster men. It's 31% higher for alabaster women. It's 34% higher for black women. There's no difference for black men because we're the ones who are the victims of most racist taunts. So we don't feel it. We are not dying so at any different know. rate. We, we, knew, right. we don't die at any different rate. Look at those numbers. Why are they really doing that? They're telling their own folk, you better step back and relax a little bit because this is real and it's affecting you. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah, don't, you know, that that's not, that wasn't about us. It might be a nice political move, but flip that pancake over and see what's really so, going so, on. So let's take it there, Bria. This question goes to you. So you sign that. Okay, it's something we already knew, but you sign it, you document it. What's the aftermath? How does it look if you're serious about it? You know, I think we all recognize that things start with policy first, okay. right? And once we can recognize and document that we uh, understand that this is impacting us, right, in the workplace, where as it relates to education, as it works to economics, because mm -hmm. essentially that's, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. How does this impact our economics? Right. And when we understand work productivity and um, birth disparities mm -hmm. and health disparities and all that such, um, we want to sign on, right? For us, for individuals who already know, um, I think this is an opportunity for us now to have some of our needs met in a way that um, we can be bold about, right? And I think we, it's important for us to utilize this opportunity of our counterparts recognizing okay. the uh, impacts of, of racial systems and uh, whether it's internalized, personally, uh, institutionalized racism, whatever it is, that um, we find ways to mitigate that and put resources, yeah. dollars, behind it. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm listening to you, and so I'm going to go to Mike Mayo Sr., because you sat in these seats where he had these conversations, you saw things. Talk, talk to me on this. I, I see you ready to go. You got your notes going, so, so holla at us. You know, it's amazing that when I heard about this signing of racism in Milwaukee County, yeah. <laughs> if you look at the airport, all right, airport they call it the plantation. Mm. They have no black managers at the airport. You don't have no one in a key management position. Let's look at the transportation from Milwaukee County. I'm talking, let's talk about the bus system. 80% mm -hmm. of the drivers are black. When if we go back and look at the administration, I mean, that runs our system, that county fund them, 95% are white. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the public works part of it. You have a young black lady there now, mm -hmm. but they have the call them uh, the workshop on the north side. They call it a black shop. <laughs> that no female work there because they have no bathroom there. And most of all the black employees come out of that shop. So when you talk about black people and you want to help black people, is it really political? Look at the DBE participation when we try to give grants out. Yeah. And look at the disparity of how black men and women are getting crumbs. And then they give it to a, a, the other white Mexican mm -hmm. But we're talking about blacks at the present moment. Yeah. It's not fair. So we, what I always look at, I'm glad he did this. So you, now he put himself in the front line. I want anyone who have opportunity to get some money, who have a business, go to the uh, county and say, I need opportunity. You said there's a disparity of black businesses in Milwaukee County, education in Milwaukee County, opportunities. Look at the employment of Milwaukee County when Scott Walker's there, was there, less blacks are working for the county now since Chris Haley been there. So let's go work ahead. at it. You know, I was going to say I I, I I hear Michael on on uh, what he speaks, and I employ anyone to utilize this opportunity who's going to take care of business, right? You know, um, because there has been such a disparity in 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 our existence and the 400 years that we've been on this land, um, we're behind in some areas, right? We haven't been privy to certain spaces, so we couldn't get those academic um, educational tools that allow for us to take certain positions. Um, this is an opportunity for us to prep as the work begins to happen in different spaces that are going to employ and adopt policies that 
um, ensure racial equity is is in place, right? So while this is this is something that can happen simultaneously, right? While while co companies, corporations, institutions, and systems get on the bandwagon of how do we make sure we're blameless in this area, it is important for us too to prepare ourselves to take position because there is going to be a shift as it relates. Hey, hold on, I see, I see Lance look. Um, okay, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, but honestly, you, I see. I saw you kind of shaking your head. That's why I'm wondering: Did you agree? Did you disagree? Well, you know, I agree okay. uh, to a certain degree. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know yeah, we we should take advantage of this opportunity. If there's an opportunity, is it a real there, opportunity? You know, I, again, I said if, and that's a big word spelled real small. <laughs> if there's an opportunity there, uh, you know, again. Lipstick on the pig? Yeah. Okay, we've been going through this for several hundred years, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the racism, the stress, mm -hmm. the uh, post-stress disorder, everything. Yeah. We've been dealing with that for years, yet still we rise. So again, like I said in the beginning, that is not about us, mm -hmm. okay? Then you're talking long-term just like with the abortion issue. Yeah. Long-term, it's affecting a certain percentage of a certain group, okay? And it's not named us, mm -hmm. okay? I, again... That opportunity is not going to, those same percentages, watch, those numbers won't change. But they'll start to throw more money in the alabaster bucket because they have to deal with these health issues. Why won't they change, though? You, you've been inside of there. I think, no, I'll be very honest. I think this might be an opportunity for someone to change. But if, if your history has shown that you have not, if you look at the study for the airport, look at the study for the transportation. We, I've done that before I left. And you look at the numbers. Look at their management numbers. I have looked at it. It's not about education, my system. It's about opportunity. I agree. Because the person can have all the education, then they say, no, we're going we're gonna to pick somebody who I know. I agree. Their son come over here, oh, we're going to give them the opportunity. But mm -hmm. so I think this is an opportunity. I hope okay. he's sincere that he's going to give people opportunity. But his history is not mm -hmm. there. So listen, we, 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 we got to cut to a commercial. We, we could keep this commercial, we could keep this conversation going. We're going to be back with our final segment on the Unspeakable Truth. It's getting hot in here. The Unspeakable mm -hmm. Truth, where we tell nothing but the truth, but we speak it in love. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. How you feel? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Or call 1-877-333-5885. To help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch, but the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. Bro, is you ready for this party tonight? Bro, you already know, and Kiki's supposed to slap her. Oh, for sure. Hey, I texted her parents not at the crib. You know I'm sliding. Yeah. All right, bro, just make sure you protect her. So we didn't use protection after the party, right? So I think we should get tested for uh, HIV or STI. Uh, I mean, I ain't been feeling different. I think I'm straight. I know, but you ain't got to have any symptoms to have some. You are now watching The Unspeakable Truth. Welcome back to the Unspeakable Truth. Um, I hope you've been enjoying this conversation. I am. This is one of the rare episodes. I ain't got to say nothing. I just let it flow. And so we, we kind of went from abortion, then we went to racism. And when I think about all of this, uh, we talk about as a public health, you said numbers don't change. And when we say numbers don't change, I'm curious in Milwaukee because we have so much black leadership inside of there. And, and I hate when people just dog on black leadership because yeah. I think that's an easy thing to do because it's a lot of other opposers out there. 
But lately, we have had some cracks within our leadership. But what's your what's your thought on that, Mike? You 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 lived in that circle. Well, first, for all the cracks that we have and the issues that's in front of us, first let's get the facts. All right. Before we make ground for judgment. Okay. Because I've been in a fire many times. Yeah. Until the truth come out. Uh, I'll so you're talking about the Willie Wade, Mike Bonds right. kind of Let situation. Let the facts come out. Now, you want to hold your black elected officials accountable. Yes, sir. But you also want to hold those white elected officials who represent you accountable. Yeah. And our leadership supposed to take care of their constituents. And see, people get confused when you say, well, they're black. Yes, they are black. But for instance, for myself, I had Sherman Park. I have a number of people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look out for black people, uh, also have Jewish community, white people. But I know every morning I have to wake up. How can I affect the people that I represent? How can I make it better for them? But only way you got to hold our elected official, black or white, to the foot to the fire and say, are you really representing me? Are you going to our meetings? Are you coming to the block club meetings? When I call you, are you going to return my phone call? And the only way you can make effect change every four years or every two years, go to the ballot. That's how you make change quick because then they realize you are serious. And our community guys start getting serious about this. So so when we think about this, and Bria, you kind of walked in that circle for a while to yourself. What was the, the most disappointing thing you learned as you started to enter into the political world, specifically as a black official? Mm, you know, quite honestly, one of the most disappointing things was uh, that, that those that looked like me didn't mm. necessarily provide the support or have the integrity mm -hmm. that I thought okay. they would have. Right? Mm. So they expected and something from you that they're not getting about. Involved. Well, we absolutely, yeah. and they're portraying something that they not they're not right. And mm. so I think mm. in a lot of ways we taint our own mission and our our own statement and our own um, progress because you know on the on the cameras we're one way. But behind the scenes where the work is being done, we're another. And that inconsistency hurts us because we are so far behind. We don't have room for that type of quote-unquote leadership. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of point out on some things when, when you are saying, how do I look out for my constituents? And, you know, it's not to make apology for any anyone that's done anything illegal or wrong or anything. But, you know, I kind of like to think that uh, when we do, do obtain positions, that we want to do all in our power to give those an opportunity that look like us, right? So when a school comes into our in our district and we know that the core of what they're providing is culture, because that's what our kids, yeah. our children need, and we know the bureaucracy that'll come with them trying to implement that into our urban community, you know, as a board member, I might say, you know what, let me see what I can do to give you a chance. Let me see how I can give you a little bit of resources to give you a little bit of leg up so that you can have an opportunity to infuse culture in the academics that our students so, need. Now, I love that you bring up culture because when we talk about politics, you usually think of black people as Democrats, just that, that yeah. the granted vote they know they're going to mm -hmm. get. So, Brother Lance, I come to you right now. Do, do we vote against our own interests, and how can you be a black Republican but still keep it real with the community? So you ask me that question, <laughs> and I'm the right person to answer that Yes, question. sir. That's who I am. Yeah. Uh, you know, my thing is when you know, I'm not on the, the politics side of it. I'm on the real political side of it. Okay. I'm a voter. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I vote for dog catcher. Yeah. I don't care what the vote is on. Yeah. I'm voting. Yes, sir. Right. I'm at the sure meeting. I'm being heard. I'm being seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that guy. Mm -hmm. When I call my alderman, and that's where I started. I call my alderman, my block, oh, block I'm all, I'm, right. I believe in the local thing. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I've got this. I don't care if it's a pothole. Mm -hmm. I don't care if the guys are not picking up the trash mm -hmm. properly. Whatever mm -hmm. needs to be done or whatever we need to talk about, hey, you know, I vote. Yes, okay, sir. and I know other people who vote because everybody around me is yeah. gonna vote. Okay, yes, I don't care if you're voting independent, mm -hmm. Democratic, Republican. See, if your name is on that list, regardless of how you're voting, if your name is on that list, you gotta say. That's right. For all the people who don't vote, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's all I gotta say to you. Whatever. So, so the people say, well, we vote. Then you think about like, let's go back to Florida with the the hanging chance. Let's say you go back to even 2016, mm -hmm. where they say, look how the Russians voted into the electronic tap and yeah. whatnot. Does my vote really count? Keep voting. That's right. That's right. Keep that's voting. Right. Okay. That's Keep right. Keep voting. Okay. Because as long as I got a vote, I got a voice. Yeah. And your voice and, do make a difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, trust me. 
there are some politics. I didn't do this. Uh, leaders will look and see how many times are you get a seven. Oh, they're going to turn your phone. Yes. Uh, but if you're yeah. a zero, <laughs> you might get down real yeah. low on, uh, on the phone. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. But, you know, here's the other thing. You know, when we think about some of the mm-hmm. things that have um, co- tried to compromise yeah. our process, we should ask ourselves yeah. why, right? If you're spending your money to yeah. compromise this process, you, there's got to be some value that I don't understand, right? You this can is why weaponize anything. Absolutely. I tell people, I said, you might think the vote is not as big. I said, but it's something. So Absolutely. make sure that you use like I got, I got to break us up. I got to break us up. But you know what? I, I'm hoping that y'all gonna come back and do this Definitely again. Anytime. We got to come back and do this again before you leave. Yes, sir. Say please vote. Please vote. Thank you. We, we have to. We, yes, we can see yes. what's going on mm-hmm. in the local and the national level mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I'd just like to thank you for tuning in to the Unspeakable Truth. Mike, Bria, Lance, mm-hmm. I'd like to thank you for coming in, spending the time, sharing your wisdom. And I just want you to know, to vote. And remember, we told you that on the Unspeakable Truth, where we speak nothing but the truth, but we speak it in love. Whether you need a hand shopping for groceries, using up scraps, or finishing every bite, Meal Prep Mate can help you plan better and save more. Whether you're a newbie getting your first taste, a meal prepper honing your chops, or a meal prep pro hungry for a challenge, you can learn how to eat smarter, plan better, and save more at every step of meal prep. When you finish every bite, you save. Start prepping with Meal Prep Mate at savethefood.com. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right. No employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no. This warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving.